problem, our goal is to label these points on a number line. So we'll set up a number line. Any line will do. Give myself plenty of room. Arrow points at the end, indicating that this number line is continuous and goes on forever. What I notice right away is that um, we've got three negative values to plot and only one positive value. So three negatives, one positive, which and that tells me, well, here's the positive direction. Here's the negative. Uh, I, I need more room on the negative side of the number line because I have more negative numbers to deal with. Um, so when I place zero down, I'll place it up right about here. And I notice that I have third and I have a sixth right here and 1.5, which is about one and, well, sorry, it is one and a half, right? And then, so I'm going to write that up there. And then here, negative 1.25 which is negative one and one fourth. So I have fourths and thirds and halves and sixths. Um, so I want to choose a scale that can represent uh, each of these. And of course, if I choose sixth, that's the smallest fraction here, I can then represent all the other fractional parts. So let's see if I have enough room for that. So here is um, uh, the positive side, negative side. We want to reach all to one and one half. So what I think Actually, it might make more sense. I, I could put sixth here, but it would take um, it would take so many six to get up to one and a half, right? It would take six six to get to one, and then three six to get to one and a half. And I just I don't think I drawing that many six. We'll do a little bit of estimation here. Let's use halves instead of that. Just easy to represent. Here's zero. Here's one half. Here's one. It goes to keep about equal spacing there. And there's one and one half. And then going the opposite direction, this is negative one half. Here's negative one, and here is negative one and one half. So we're gonna do some estimation. Now when we plot, we have one and a half. We'll plot the positive value first. Just draw a dot on the line at one and a half. Next, let's do another easy one, negative one and one fourth. So here's negative one. Now negative one and one fourth is not up this way. Right? Just because you see negative one, don't think end of fourth and go to the right. You're actually working down this way. So it'll be about here, right? About halfway between negative one and negative one and a half. And I should label these. It's one and one half, negative one and one fourth. And if you're confused again as to why I went this way, negative one and one fourth really means negative one and negative one fourth. So we're going negative one and another negative one fourth. Now, what about negative one sixth and one third? Well, both of both of those are uh, less than a half, so they're both going to be over here. And since we're estimating, I know that negative one third will go further than uh, negative one sixth because this is a bigger piece. A third, if you have a pie and you cut it in three pieces, a third is bigger than if you took that pie and cut it in to six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means that if I was to hop down this way, and I hop down a third, I'll go further than if I hop down a sixth. So we'll put a th negative one third further away from zero, and negative one sixth, it's okay to estimate. In this case, just a rough sketch, and that's how you can plot those, those points. Now sometimes we're given a bunch of numbers, and in this case we're asked to order them from, from least to greatest. And we can use a number line to help us do that, uh, or we can just talk about the numbers. I think we're going to give a rough sketch of a number line. So I guess the first thing you might want to do is identify all the positive values. Those will all be bigger than the negative values, because on the number line, as we go to the right, our numbers do get greater. So this is a positive number. So is this, and this, and this. And that tells me that, well, 50 is the biggest positive number. That's the biggest number of all. So here's 50. Then we have 23.6. And then well, the question is what's bigger, 0.3 or 3 out of 5? Well, 3 out of 5, you can think, well, what's that out of 10? That'd be 6 out of 10. Or 60 out of 100. 0.3 is like 3 tenths. I guess it could, that's easier to compare by tenths. Notice that 6 tenths is larger than 3 tenths. And all I did there was double the 3 to make 6. And think of it while well, I'm doubling the 3, I have to keep this relationship constant, double the 5. 6 out of 10 is the same as 3 out of 5, and that's bigger than 3 out of 10, which is this number right here. So, jumping down the scale here, we have 3 fifths, 
and then very close to that, um, or fairly close, I guess, 0.3. And now we have our negative numbers. Now in this case, negative 45.2 is the furthest to the left. So unlike positive 50, which had the, the largest distance from 0, this also has the largest distance from 0 on the negative side, right? But that also means it's the smallest number. So negative 45.2 is all the way to the left. Then we have negative 4 fifths and negative 1 half, right? Negative 0.5. Well, 4 fifths, you can think of that in how's it compared to a half. Well, 4 out of 5 is, is much further from 0 than negative 1 half. I guess the way I think about it is that 4 out of 5, well, 2.5 out of 5, that's like a half, right? 2.5 out of 5, that's a half. Well, this is negative 4 out of 5, so it's much larger than that. It's much further away from 0, and therefore much more negative. So it's kind of, we can place it here, negative 4 fifths, and a negative half about there. All right, so I hope that helps.